Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this. Um, my name is Jessica Hester. I'm the Director of Operations with the Chamber. And then we also have Connie Ernst, our Director of Communications, joining us today. So we are the two who will help you if, whenever you decide to join, do this wonderful trip to Greece. So right now we are recording this webinar and afterwards I will send it out to you so you can go back and refer to it. Or if you wanna share it and pass it along, we'd love for you to do that. And joining us today, who will guide us through this, is Vibe. Um, Vibe works with Aventura, and um, he'll go ahead and start explaining everything to us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a great day over here where I am, so it's interesting. I'm talking to all you fine people uh, sitting here in Vancouver, Canada. Luckily, it's not raining, so it's good. <laughs> So uh, thank you for joining in, uh, and I'm really excited to speak to your group for the first time on behalf of Aventura World. I believe some of you have seen my senior colleague, Mr. Ian Scott, for different presentations and interactions in the past. Uh, this presentation is about your Greece trip that is going out in the month of March next year. Um, before we begin the session, I would really like to thank the Chamber for organizing it at such a short notice. We were trying to come at certain dates and could not do it, and then uh, Ian had to bring me in, and uh, the Chamber really responded well to bring you all people together under uh, this webinar session. So thank you all for uh, organizing and as well as joining in at such a short notice. Uh, and the good part of this trip is I, in, in the previous trips that we were doing in this uh, reopening cycle of the world, we did not have any precedence of how things are to be done. We were doing it basically with our own general knowledge and general understanding of how things are to be run. However, right now, as we are sitting in the third week of October and going into November, we have roughly 1,900 passengers traveling with us and a, a big chunk of them are traveling to Greece. So it is also good that we are learning a lot and we all have already learned a lot that what all changes we have to bring out and what all things we have to do. So I'll be talking about the learning that we've had. Uh, this session will be, the slideshow would be somewhere in the range of 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, and the session can last up to an hour, depending on the number of questions I come across. Um, I would appreciate that uh, you hold your questions towards the end of the session, because you never know the next slide would be addressing what you are thinking. Uh, if by any chance you face any technical difficulties of listening to me or seeing the slides, just put that thing in the in the chat. So uh, if we are good to go, uh, and uh, I will begin. Okay, so Aventura World, a lot of people know us uh, who are repeat travelers from the chamber, but I will give you a basic uh, idea of who we are. So we have been in this business of group travel since 1972, which means next year we are celebrating our 50th year. <laughs> we have, um, uh, we are part of a larger organization called as the Sakara International Group, which has more thousands of employees all over the world. Aventura World, alongside its partners, has its offices uh, across the globe. So I'm taking care of the uh, Western US and Canada um, office in uh, Vancouver. There is, the, the head office is in New Jersey. There is one office in uh, close to San Diego in California. And then uh, the international ones in Paris, one in Rome, one in London, one in New Delhi, and a very big uh, presence in Cairo. Um, we are part of the Association of Chamber of Commerce uh, as in the capacity of their official travel partner. So we exclusively work with chambers of commerce and that allows us to understand their expectations, their requirements much better. And with all these years of experience, I, I hope we have gained that experience to cater to the chamber's audience. 
Uh, we are a very nimble company. We change with times, and especially uh, with all the things that have happened in the past uh, one and a half to two years, we have adapted to those things, uh, I must say, very well. And I'm not the person who should be commending myself or my organization, but we have heard from people that we were one of those few companies who were quick to realize what all changes have to be brought and what all adaptations have to be done. Uh, we are travel wholesalers and we value ourselves into how nicely we package and price our programs. Most of the tours are operated and run by us, basically leaving out any middlemen, which kind of gives us more grasp over the content as well as the pricing of the tour programs. The trip we are talking about is Greece, the land of gods and heroes. Uh, this one departs next year, March on the 18th. The trip is uh, divided into two parts. One is the main segment of the trip, which is nine days and seven nights. And then there is a three-day extension for visiting Santorini Island. So the, the base trip of nine days and seven nights is priced at $3,199. And it included it includes your flight from New Orleans. Well, Greece is uh, very interesting. It is it is very interestingly located uh, by uh, the coast of Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea, and uh, a lot of its uh, islands and its cliff sides are as a result of volcanic eruptions, although many million years ago. But uh, it has quite an interesting uh, topography, amazing vegetation, very interesting climate patterns, and also great uh, sights to see. It also is part of one of uh, the seven major ancient civilizations of the world. So it has a kind of a continuous thread to history uh, running till now. In some ways, uh, by different accounts of archaeologists, Athens happens to be uh, one of the, I would say, world's oldest continuous uh, country capitals uh, when it comes to, you know, the three major ancient country capitals of Cairo in Egypt or Rome in Italy or Athens in Greece. So they, they, this, this city has been a country capital for more than a couple of millennia now. So uh, great history, amazing food, and very hospitable people. Uh, we talk about history. I mean, they, they have been pioneers of a lot of architectural models we see now in our modern world also. People are really amazing. They take pride in their culture and tradition. There are world famous sites. People going to Santorini would be seeing this particular piece of architecture over there. Amazing food and wine. A lot of you, I suppose, would have tried uh, Greek cuisine here back home in the US. But going there and having the authentic one would be much of a difference. Um, as I mentioned, very friendly people, very hospitable. Uh, they really love interacting with uh, with foreign people. They, they want to exchange and they want to share. That's the best part of it. And obviously, this trip is about traveling with friends, with people you know, or people who are like-minded, because if you are part of the chamber or associated with the chamber, you're taking one box of being like-minded because you, you are part of one association or a similar association. Uh, the trip, uh, this, this segment of the slideshow talks about your, a brief of your daily schedule. I would not delve too much into the exact details of your uh, time-wise, day-wise stuff, but I'll highlight the important part. I will show you a lot of pictures. I will leave the narration part to the guides and the facilitators you happen to meet in Greece because they are an expert for that. And somehow, if I get into storytelling, I'm really good at it. And maybe you would be satisfied with the story and would never visit Greece. So I don't want to do that. So uh, day one, we depart for Greece from New Orleans. And day two is when we arrive. Well, I don't want to scare you. Uh, because we are traveling east, uh, on the calendar, it becomes from day one to day two. Uh, you are not traveling for 48 hours. You are traveling for well under 20 hours. Uh, you have connections. We don't have the exact 
life as of now, when the booking starts coming in, when we see sizable number of passengers, then we start negotiating with uh, airlines. But historically, your travel from New Orleans to Athens can be anywhere in the range of 15 hours to 18 hours to one side. And that includes your layovers and everything. So you arrive in Athens, which is the capital of Greece uh, and an amazing city, and you are welcomed by our Adventure World representative and um, taken into a coach. You are assisted with putting your luggage. And these coach buses are usually uh, 45 to 50 seater buses. You usually, sometimes you have um, toilets on board, sometimes you don't, depends upon what kind of bus we have been allocated with, but they always come with those adjustable suspensions and, and nice seats and, and air conditioning. Some buses even have Wi-Fi, sometimes they don't. So it's kind of a conditional thing for the Wi-Fi. Um, very nice, very comfortable, and uh, good enough to accommodate uh, or not more than 35 people. Usually, we don't fill our buses more than 80% of their maximum capacity. And given the fact that we have to still abide by the rule of social distancing, it's basically come down to 70% now. So um, we are staying uh, for seven nights in a little idyllic town outside of Athens called Eskineta. Uh, Kineta is uh, an hour outside Athens. It's actually precisely 40 minutes, depending on the traffic, but on the safe side, we give one hour. But if you see the geographical location of Kineta, you are, when you do your sightseeing activities to uh, Nascleon or Athens or Delphi or Olympia, you're kind of in the center of the action. So. Each day you go in one direction, so you have lesser uh, distance to travel if you would have stayed right in Athens. But we spend sizable time in all the places. We visit Athens twice. Uh, so if somebody thinks that they are missing out on, on the main city, they would not be. Uh, rather, it would be really good to be outside the hustle bustle of the town. One interesting part of this trip is that we, the rest, the resort that we are staying in is right at the at the beach. The beach is not a sandy beach, it's a pebble beach because that's mostly like what you'll find all over Greece, but it is really well attended. Uh, and this is predominantly being used by Aventura World Travelers, so they're even used to of our travelers going over there. Uh, it has got two restaurants, one patio seating, a couple of swimming pools, sporting facilities and, and a lot more. The rooms are very well attended, very stylish, modern chic kind of places uh, and very much resonate with the, the architecture and the color scheme you find in Greece. Uh, very standard staple uh, inclusions like satellite TV, uh, a safety box which is like a locker uh, and Wi-Fi and uh, you get iron, you get air conditioning, a mini fridge, and so on. Restaurant. Uh, I would come to the inclusions part of the trip, but I would like to mention that uh, in your nine days, seven nights in Canada, all your meals are included. And your meals are also accompanied by local alcoholic beverages uh, and some specialty drinks that they would be offering you in the, with the menu. So it's basically unlimited booze at the bar. And this is what the patio seating looks like, and this is what the beach looks like. Okay, so basically your day two is getting accustomed, uh, getting acclimatized, uh, getting rid of the uh, little bit of uh, tiredness in the flight and all. And on day three, you start your sightseeing activity. So maybe you can have your breakfast on day three morning uh, at the patio right beside uh, the sea. We start our touring with a uh, tour of Athens. So we see a lot of ancient sites over here. We see the stadium where the first Olympic Games, the modern Olympics happened. 
Uh, mind that the ancient Olympics also started in Greece, but we go to the site of the first modern Olympic Games, which took place in 1896. Some of the key spots that we we visit are the Ark of Hadrian and the Temple of Olympian Zeus. We go to the Parliament and the Memorial to the Unknown Soldier. Your facilitators, your local guides will time it in such a way that you happen to see the change of guards, or at least the guards doing their military drills over there. Uh, it is slightly different in the feeling compared to what you see uh, at the Buckingham Palace. So it's not that much of a pomp and show. It's very traditional military kind of drill, and uh, I, I'm sure that you will enjoy it. It's also about honoring the soldiers who laid, the down, laid down their lives for their country. Uh, in the same proximity, we see the Academy, the National Library of Greece, the statues of Plato and the other thinkers. We also see the Constitution Square. So these are certain things that uh, you would be covering through the day. Uh, why we do Greece, uh, sorry, why we do Athens in two parts is firstly, because it's the capital, so we want to go there first and we want to understand the major places. But then towards the end of the trip, we go once again. And that time, you would feel a little more confident, you will know your bearings, you will know your direction. And during that phase, you will have more free time to explore the city. So the first instance, you see all the key spaces, you see all the major alleys and understand the directions. And on the second instance, you see some uh, remaining spots, but you have ample free time to explore it by yourself. We, towards the end of the day, we also go to Acropolis. So this is like one of the most photographed uh, monuments in the country, uh, to my understanding. And uh, again, a great, we have one of the nicest and award-winning guys and facilitators who, who are really good with their English and also simultaneously good with their knowledge about the history and culture of the country. Uh, and because they have been working very closely with the Ventura, they also understand the, the audience that is coming and visiting them. Some pictures of, of the previous groups. Day four, so day three concludes at the, um, uh, with maybe some pictures. And day four is we, from the city hustle bustle, we now go to the village of uh, Peloponnese Peninsula. So we try to also alter the pace of uh, your sightseeing. One day you, you landed, you relaxed through the day. So the next day we make it a little more um, you know, challenging by taking it through the city, but the next day again, we slow it down. So some amazing breathtaking sites. And again, uh, we, we go to this place called as Mycenae, which is the city known to be rich in gold in the ancient times. We see some really interesting architecture. And again, this is the picture of the lion's gate. I would leave that to the guides to explain you what the significance of this place is. But let me tell you, that's a great story. Um, the Beehive Royal Tomb, and this is my favorite spot among all the things people visit. So this is the ancient theater of Epidaris, and it is still being used. And when, when we say ancient, it is a couple of millennia old. Um, and the acoustics of this place are so amazing that if you drop a coin here, the chap sitting here can listen to it. And we go to the fishing village of uh, Nastleon, but it's also known as one of the romantic towns in Greece. Uh, this place, uh, the village is, is all on the coast as well as has some places where you might have to climb up. Uh, so wearing some nice sturdy walking shoes are always recommended. It's not a very tough climb, but sometimes you get those undulated paths which you have to cross. Uh, it is also full of nice cafes and boutiques, and you will have the opportunity of exploring them for an hour, hour and a half or something, depending on how much spare time you have with you and the guide thing is, is sufficient. 
Now, this is quite interesting. So in all our Ventura World Tours, uh, we try to include not just sightseeing and going to buildings and going to markets, but we try to bring in what we call as the cultural discovery series. Uh, there are certain activities that you would be seeing. One of them, part of the cultural discovery series is olive oil tasting. And it's not just olive oil tasting, you're taken to an actual farm. Now, when you see we are going to the countryside uh, place, we know that we would be encountering farms and why not the olive farms? So we see a facility where olives are collected, washed, sorted, and then processed to extract olive oil. And this is a very interesting process. People love doing this, love uh, knowing about it, learning about it. And also some of the people come back with uh, a norm that the olive oil they are consuming here in the United States is not of the same quality what we are seeing over here. So it's, it's part of one of the activities that we do in our cultural discovery series. So that's the first one. Day five, uh, we would be doing a little bit of boat tour. We would be crossing the Corvus Canal. Now, on your way from Kineta, when you travel west to your sightseeing activities, even to uh, the day four activities, you would be taking a bridge crossing this water body where the canal is. This time you are going to the actual canal. It's quite an interesting place. Uh, we board on a boat to cruise, not this boat, <laughs> this is just there for the joke. So it's just a fishing boat. Uh, this is how the canal looks like. And it connects the Saronic Gulf in the agency with the uh, Isthmus of uh, for, uh, Peloponnese. And uh, again, quite an old structure, uh, beautifully made, and this is what the port would look like. Another, another angle, another picture that shows you uh, how the canal must have been constructed. And these are the bridges. This is the bridge we usually take uh, for our day-to-day -day commute from Kineta to on the westward side if we go there. Another part of the cultural discovery series is sampling Uzo. So once we have crossed the canal, we stop somewhere for our lunch and we sample Uzo. Uzo is a local uh, alcoholic beverage which Greek people take really pride in. If you don't like it, uh, just take a sip and keep it down because uh, some people do take an offense that you don't like. So, I mean, it's, it, they are, it's kind of an emotional thing for the Greek people. So uh, I would say it holds the same importance as what tequila holds for Mexican people. So that's, that's part of the culture or, or vodka for, for Russian people. It has the same kind of importance in the Greek culture. Uh, if you love it, uh, nobody is holding your hand. Enjoy it without being a nuisance to the group, but um, it, it's really part of uh, how you exchange. And you can talk to local people, discuss about uh, how it is made and try to understand from them. Not just stick to your own group, but actually mingle with people around you, which is a great experience. And just see the world go by, see how, how the maritime uh, things work in Greece. So again, if you see, it's a, it's a longish drive, but you see some place when it slows down a bit towards the end of the day when you are tasting ouzo. Now we know that uh, there is no point, you know, exploring more because we are feeling a little uh, tipsy. Uh, day six, it can be a free day. Uh, I would be discussing what we call as early bird discount. And given the fact that we are sitting today uh, in the third week of October, uh, we are slightly close to our early bird discount cutoff, but in a particular separate section, I would be discussing it. Right now, I will focus on the content of what happened. Uh, so day six can either be a free day where you can stay back at the hotel, maybe use the, the spa, the swimming pool, or go to the beach, or there are certain other uh, rentals uh, that you can take to uh, do some water sports depending on your choice or you can utilize the early bird discount tour or an optional tour to Delphi. So if you are on this tour, uh, you would be served with lunch while being on the tour and you see the town of Delphi. 
If you're staying back at the hotel, you would be served lunch at the hotel. Uh, in Delphi, if you opt for it, you go to the Apollo Temple, the Athena Sanctuary, and let me tell you, I mean, this is something not to be missed. The treasury of the Athenians, so it is talking about the Athenian society, uh, which was basically um, the reason why we have democracy in the world. And uh, we also visit the ancient stadium. So in, in Delphi, we see the ancient stadium. And these stadiums were part and parcel of the culture of ancient Greece. A lot of, uh, a lot of the entertainment used to happen on these outdoor fields. Uh, we visit the Delphi Museum while being there. Uh, some amazing artifacts over here. And uh, day seven is again free and it is an optional tour to Olympia. Now, this tour is not part of the early bird discount. So if somebody has taken the Delphi tour and still wants to have a spare day towards the end, they can opt out. But I still once again recommend if you want to spend a little more, uh, you, you can go to Olympia. And this is the birthplace of the Olympic Games, the ancient Olympic Games, uh, and the modern Olympics, the first one happened in Athens. So we go to the Temple of Hera, we see the Temple of Zeus, and we also go to the ancient Olympian Stadium. So this is how it looks like in the modern day. The arch that you see over here is basically the finishing line of the great marathon race. Day eight, we go back to Athens. Uh, this is the Museum of Acropolis. So we've already seen Acropolis, but a lot of things that were excavated from that site have been brought into the, the modern day museum, which is built on an ancient site. So it's, it's a marvelous building. Uh, it, it focuses on the history of Acropolis, and this is what you would be expecting inside it. Uh, yeah, and some great food options once again. And as I mentioned, uh, towards the second visit to Athens, you would be doing some sightseeing, but right after lunch, you have the entire afternoon free to explore the street markets of Athens. And this is how most of them look like. There's a great time to pick up some souvenirs, just to chit chat with people, Buying fruits from here and eating them and consuming them is absolutely safe. And it will give you an insight into the daily life of people. And it's, it's again, these places are not like the tourist trap shopping areas. These are just regular markets where locals go. It also gives an authentic uh, experience of, of exploring the town. The good part is because you have been to Athens five days back, it gives you much more confidence to, to be in the town, to know more about it, to, to navigate it by yourself and so on. Day nine, if you are part of just that nine day tour, you would depart from Athens uh, for, for airport. Now, usually that happens after breakfast, we check out. So basically a, an evening before you pack your bags, keep them ready in the morning, the bus will drop you at the airport based on the time of your flight and then you fly back to the united states now because you're flying west you would reach within the same calendar day and just some pictures to sum it up so what is included so your air transportation from new orleans uh, seven night accommodation included 20 meals included uh, which is con which consists of seven breakfasts, six lunches, and seven dinners. Uh, local alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks at the bar each evening. All your sightseeing, as I showcased, your cultural discovery series program, which is inclusive of your, uh, an interaction session with a local guest speaker, olive oil tasting, and, uh, taste and checking out sampling ouzo. Uh, you will always have a professional tour director with you, and if there are any step-on-step of -step guides specifically required for certain areas, they are part of it. Your baggage handling, uh, um, people will assist you with putting and taking off the, the luggage from the coach buses, so that is included. 
The tour price is 3,199 per person. If you are traveling as a single, and I say single, it means that you are occupying an entire room, a hotel room by yourself, there's a supplement uh, above your price for $699. Um, there, you can always read through the, you know, the flyer and the form about taxes. So fuel surcharges and taxes for $536 are included. There's an additional $150 tax, which is um, an add-on to what you're paying. Now here I'm um, highlighting certain things, which is about the early bird discount. When we advertise this trip, the early bird discount cutoff date was launched at October 29, this like six days from today, seven days from today. Uh, if you block your space by this day, your trip price is 3199 and you get the Delphi tour uh, the day six Delphi tour, which is worth $169 for free. Uh, I know it's a tight timeline. However, if I get uh, some number of people saying, yes, we would be booking, I can get this pushed ahead to 5th of November. So as of now, while we are doing the presentation, it is 29th of October, but if after the session or maybe tomorrow, Jessica says yes, I have some passengers who will want to book and just need some more days. I would straight away make it 5th of November, so that should not be a problem. So how it uh, affects the pricing is you get it for 3199 which is $100 off because the tour price is 3299 plus you get a tour to Delphi worth $169 to see, and it's just to come in a little early. That's it. But I'll come to that part, I'll revisit this part once again when we talk about how to book the program. So if there are any confusions, I hope they get sorted when we see the booking forms. If you are extending your trip to Santorini, uh, you will have to tell us upfront. Adding it later on is difficult because your flight manifest is done based on the choices you make initially. Uh, extension to Santorini is uh, two nights and three days. This uh, extension is inclusive of your two night accommodation in Santorini, uh, two breakfasts. You will have domestic air connection from Athens to Santorini also included. Again, some sightseeing activities, another cultural discovery activity of wine tasting, all of that is included. If you're taking the uh, Santorini extension, the price for a double occupancy is $6.99, which is inclusive of all the things above. If you're traveling single, you add some more dollars to it and it's $9.98. So Santorini is again a picture perfect idyllic island uh, in the agency. Uh, as I mentioned, most of these islands are of volcanic origin, so they have very steep cliffs and Santorini and the neighboring towns and villages are constructed mostly on the cliff slopes. So we do uh, on day 10, we do the Santorini island tour. So on, the, on day nine, we are flying in and staying at the hotel, again, relaxing and day 10, we, we do the island tour. We see the monastery of Prophetus. We see some amazing sites from an elevation. We see the town of Picros, and in the Cultural Discovery Series, we check out the wine museum. An uh, interesting theory about Greek wine is that up until some maybe a couple of decades back, it was one of the worst wines produced in the world. But slowly and steadily, these people worked hard to make the right combination, make the right recipe, select the right kind of um, grapes, and have really come across by developing some great wines. And the museum is basically an ode to those efforts and you can do some tasting over there. Uh, we also visit the little idyllic village of Oya. It's called it's called Oya. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, it has some great uh, sights to see. Uh, no matter, a lot of people talk about Santorini as an island, but the real deal is Oya. Uh, this is what the streets would look like. Again, you can see, as I mentioned, these towns are developed on cliff slopes. So there is a bit of up and down. 
And this is the major reason we keep it as an option. Firstly, definitely it adds to the, the price of the tour, but not everybody is physically fit to do this thing for two days straight. It's not that taxing in all honesty, but if you are expecting it to be a brief, it is not. So compared to what you have done in the mainland of Greece, this is slightly more physically demanding. I'm not discouraging you, but I, I have to be really honest and upfront in telling you that why we keep it as an option. It is an amazing bucket list destination. One has to do it, uh, but one has to be really prepared for walk, for a bit of walking up and down. And some pictures to show you how it looks like. And day 11 is when you connect back to Athens and you fly back to US. Okay, so I'm just running through some pictures to show you and here we come to the real meat of, of the presentation. So uh, you are not required to apply for any visas to travel to Greece if you are holding an American passport. You just have to comply to two conditions pertaining to passport. Number one is your passport should be valid for six months beyond your departure date from US. When I say six months beyond your departure date, it means 18th March is the departure date. If you add six months to it, that becomes 18th of September next year. So if you see that your passport expiration is after 18th of September next year, you are good. If it's before, you're not good. So you need to renew your passport. That's part one. Part two is you need to have minimum two blank pages on your passport because if there are no blank pages, you have run out of those sheets. No matter your passport is valid for beyond those days, it's still not good for the immigration people to put the stamp on. So if you have run out of blank pages, or if the passport is not uh, valid beyond 18th of September 2022, you need to get a new passport. And that will give you, right now you have ample time to get that thing done. Even if you are making a registration right now, and you know that you're going to renew your passport, you can still put the name as in your current passport and let us know that you've gone for a renewal because at least your name will name and date of birth is staying consistent is just that the passport number is changing. Okay, travel insurance and key feature that we have with Aventura World, we have partnered with a very reputed insurance company called as the CSA Generali and uh, we offer travel protection and because of COVID, we enhance the travel protection policy. So we have our standard policy and we have another policy which will be canceled for any reason. Uh, the bullet points over here talk about the standard policy, which covers trip cancellation due to accident, sickness, or death of your immediate family. Any medical requirements on the trip, a trip interruption and cancellation, Travel delay, missed connection, emergency, evacuation, lost baggage or baggage delay. Uh, I would be sharing a link with the chamber post this presentation. They can share it with you guys. Uh, you can check the exact coverage and the contact details and the policy number and everything on that link. If you need further assistance, it is always recommended to speak to the insurance company because by the rule of law, I can't solicit or I can't discuss much beyond this information about insurance because I'm not a licensed insurance professional. So I can just give you an overview of what a general life insurance, uh, general in travel insurance includes. And uh, for, for deeper understanding, you can always reach out to, to the insurance professional. Uh, there is another variant of this insurance which we brought in some 10 months back, what, what we call as the cancel for any reason. Now, it is identical in its coverage to the insurance and... Okay, I have a question already coming in. I'll pass this question. I'll come back to this one. It's about the weather. Okay, so... Um, 
it's it's similar to its coverage as travel insurance and then you have an added benefit of cancel for any reason it is costlier than the regular insurance because it's giving you this feature you can cancel this in uh, the trip up to 48 hours before departure and uh, there are no questions asked 65% of the money that you paid is given you back directly and 35% is given to you as future travel credit. So this insurance is costlier, however, alongside these coverages will give you this extra. But we will proceed to the next slide. I would really appreciate everybody goes through this uh, link that I will be sharing. I will give a disclaimer over here that insurance is not compulsory. It is recommended and highly, highly recommended from our side. You can get it from anywhere you want, whether your credit card company is offering it, whether you have some friend who can use an insurance uh, professional, whether your local AAA is doing it for you. It's absolutely fine to get it, but it is always recommended to get it. And then you can make comparisons whether our proposal is better than somebody else's and vice versa. Okay, how do I sign up? I will go to this one, but I'll answer the question that came in uh, from Jerry. What's the weather usually like in March? Uh, good question. And uh, all I can say is the weather of that particular region is very much like Southern California. It's very much like the San Diego weather in, in the particular season. It's slightly drier than Southern California, although. Uh, the I mean, again, the, the weather patterns in the world are changing so frequently and, and they're slightly abrupt many times. So I can't pinpoint the exact rain predictions or, or temperature predictions, uh, even like as of now. You can see some predictions a week before your departure, but I can give you a range. Uh, you are, the night temperatures are somewhere in the range of mid 60s and the day temperatures are somewhere in the range of mid 70s. Uh, it does not rain in that uh, season usually, but again, I don't have a crystal ball to predict it what will happen. But one good thing is uh, you can, if you are going uh, in that particular season, you can still, uh, you're not kind of not required to uh, carry a lot of uh, warm clothing. It's you can dress up in layers depending on how it is. And as I said, closer to your departure, you can monitor the temperature on a website called as weather.com and see if you need to carry something. And again, a lot of people are absolutely fine with mid 70s, but some people start feeling cold in that weather. So it's totally subject to what you want. Um, carrying things like uh, a folding umbrella or a rain poncho is always recommended just in case you want to be prepared for rain. But as I mentioned, it does not rain that much in that region. Um, last but not the least, shoes, sturdy shoes are always appreciated because they give you good grip on certain old sites which have cobblestone path and so on. So they're always handy items. Besides that, if you want to dress up well for any a dinner evening or nice pictures with your friends. Yes, you can carry a nice dress and nice dress shoes. Uh, that will really help you. Okay. How do I sign up? So there are two ways to sign up. The old school way is the registration form or the paper registration, and there's a modern way, which is the online registration. Uh, both are acceptable. The online is preferred for two reasons. Number one, it is instant. It uh, does not have to have uh, printing and then writing and then scanning and then emailing. It is like straightforward. But if you're not familiar, if you're not used to, you can always use the paper form. So uh, on the cover page or on the top of the paper form, you will also see the online booking link and the booking code. So I will come to the booking link slightly later. We will talk about the form here. So the first section is talking about your personal details, your name as in your passport, date of birth, passport number, and so on. And when I mentioned that if by any chance your passport is expired 
or does not comply to the conditions I mentioned before, uh, you can still write a comment that applied or applying for new passport. And uh, your mailing address, uh, email address, whether you are a single or you're doing a double or twin. And if you're doing a double or twin, who is your fellow passenger? If you notice, this one form is for one passenger. If you are a couple traveling together, you might have to do two copies of it and then fill it individually and write each other's name, your fellow passenger name. Any kind of notes which say gluten-free diet or vegan diet or non-smoking room, blah, 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 whatever fits in. If you, if you think that there are more things you want to write, just pick a blank sheet of paper, write all your notes over there and scan and send it with the form. Uh, and this is how you, this is a section for your optional tours. So the Delphi tour, the lunch is included. The Olympia tour also lunch is included. If you're staying back at the hotel, the lunch is included over there. Um, as I mentioned, the Delphi tour is part of the early bird discount. If, um, if you select yes and the registration is received before 29th, as of now I'm stating 29th, but I can get it extended to the 5th. So we'll talk uh, to Jessica about that uh, at a later discussion. For, for you guys, it's 29th right now. Um, the Olympia tour, if you want to take it, is also 169, which is additional. This is the section you mentioned about Santorini, and then you do a total of what it is coming up to be. If this first column here is about uh, your price when you are doing it before your early bird, and this is about when you're doing after your early bird. Uh, this section is about your insurance. As I mentioned, there are two types of insurance, the regular policy and the cancer for any reason. So based on whatever total comes here, you can tally what your insurance would be. So let's say if your final tour price is between 3,500 to 4,000, these are the respective insurance amounts and so on. And then you do a yes or a no whether you want the insurance. Then you do a final calculation, which is $600 deposit plus anything that you're paying for your optional tours for Santorini and for insurance, and that becomes your deposit here. Uh, the balance is to be paid 90 days before departure, and I'll come to that part. This is the place where you mention about your credit card details. We accept Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card, and this is where you put all the details as an authorization for payment. Uh, and then this is the cancellation policy section. Now, this is important to note that although the payment cutoff date is 90 days before departure, which is 18th of December. However, if you cancel 131 days prior to departure, we will give you all your money back, no questions asked except for the money that you paid for insurance, because that money is collected by the insurance company, it's not ours to give you. So uh, 131 days, we are already sitting on that, so we are kind of crossed that part. So we're already between this uh, uh, retaining $800 over here. And then you sign and you can email it. There's an email ID written over here, which is info at adventureworld.com and copy your chamber's email ID also. Or if you want to fill it and submit at the chamber and allow the chamber to email it, we can do it. You can also, there's an email ID for the chamber over here, which is jessica at santamonychamber.com. Okay, I have a question over here. Is there an option for someone to fly out of another airport instead of New Orleans? Yes, there is an option. Let me cover the online booking system and I will answer this thing simultaneously because there's a section in the online booking system talking about. It. Okay, so this is what the online booking system looks like. So I'll go back once again. So here's the link, which is adventureworld.com forward slash booking and your booking ID is T-O-J-N-M-D. So when you go there for the first time, you will have to register as a new user. And if you are a repeat visitor, you can use your user ID here. And then you 
so once you have uh, that register, it will give you that thank you for the registration. And then you are here on this page. And here is where you will add the booking ID I presented to you. It's on the flyer. Uh, you can always cross check there. I've used a different chamber screen grab, but it is pretty much identical to what uh, it is. So there are six stages over here, and they're very small individual stages. The first part is just like the, the uh, personal details, then the room occupancy, the twin, double, and so on. And the third section is talking about the air gateway departure point. So we had a question. So this form has a facility of filling the air gateway departure point. We can accommodate most of the major airports of the United States. If you ask me some godforsaken place somewhere, obviously it will be difficult or very costly. But if it's a, a major town, major city, which has a decent airport, uh, we can definitely uh, provide you with an alternate price. So number one, whether you want to fly out from elsewhere, if you remember the paper form, you can use the notes section, uh, flying out of Los Angeles, can you give me a prize? Flying out of Chicago, can you give me a prize? Flying out of Boise, Idaho, can you give me a prize? And so on. Uh, if you also want us to quote you for business class or any kind of upgrade, you can put it over there too. So even this form also has a notes section and paper form. As I mentioned, if you lose, if you run out of space, just use a blank sheet of paper, put your name on the top and the chamber's name alongside so that we know that this paper belongs to you and you can put it there and then we will go to your price separately. Okay. Uh, we will talk about then the next screen. You talk, go to the optional tours and you also select the insurance. You review and you authorize for the payment. Uh, I have got another question which talks about currency used in Greece. So in Greece, you use the euro, which is the common currency for Europe. Uh, going there, the best thing to do is uh, you would need some cash but a lot of your requirements are fulfilled by your cards. Now, if you remember all your meals on the main piece of the trip are included, which means you basically don't have to budget for your meal. Uh, what you're budgeting for is any kind of shopping that you do or any kind of tipping that you are doing. Or if you are not taking a meal at the hotel but still want to go out, then obviously you need to factor in some extra money. So uh, tipping typically is done in cash. The reason is, let's say in the United States, you give your card at a restaurant or a hotel and they, the machines are programmed to charge tips. But in Europe, the machines are not programmed to charge tips. So you would need some cash. Now, when I say cash, you would need euros. That's part one. How to get euros is absolutely your choice. There are two ways. Number one is you can carry your American banks, any American bank that you bank with their debit card, and ask them whether if you use that debit card in an ATM machine in Greece, would you be allowed to withdraw in euros? So basically, the bank charges you uh, the equivalent amount of US dollars plus some fee and and the machine dispenses euros. That's option one. Option two is getting actual money converted. So you can go to a currency store in your city or when you land in Athens, you can get your currency converted over there. Now, how big of a shopper you are, I really don't know. So I can't comment how much money you need for shopping. But for tipping and everything, I would restrict my answer for now. Uh, what we do is closer to your departure date, somewhere two to three weeks before departure, we do another session, what we call as the pre-departure orientation, where we discuss all those minute details of how much money do you need and how much is the tipping standard in the country and so on. So, but I can tell you the currency needed is euro and uh, because your meals are included you don't have to factor in a lot of money for your meals but for other incidentals like tipping and shopping you need some money and both in the form of plastic money and cash 
So that brings us towards the end of the presentation. Beyond these questions, anybody has any other questions? You want me to show you another slide once again? Uh, you can unmute yourself and we can speak to you. About vaccination. Okay, I got another chat question. COVID concerns. Okay. Thank you. So Greece happened to be the first country in the world to allow vaccinated, fully vaccinated American travelers to visit them. And that too, without any strings attached. You, if you are fully vaccinated in the United States, you are most welcome without any hassle. Uh, currently, I saw the, rate, uh, the statistics today. Currently, Greece stands as the 68th most affected country in the world. And when you talk about the number of countries and the major and minor countries being 68, although despite being such a big and major country, it's quite a commendable achievement. That's part one. Uh, part two is uh, if you are fully vaccinated, um, yes, I, I started by saying that we are maintaining social distancing in the buses. Similar kind of rules are applicable at your sightseeing activities, at your restaurants, and so on. So that is part one. You are required to carry masks. A lot of people are traveling in the coming days. I have a group going out on the 6th of November with 300 people to Greece. So they are also doing their due diligence, and we would learn more. And also, the things related to COVID are you know, they change very dynamically. Like for example, previously people were going and they were doing quarantine. Now the quarantine is off. Uh, then came in the home isolation. Now the home isolation is off. So these things keep on changing very frequently. But as of now, if I tell you today's rules, it is if you're fully vaccinated in the United States, you are most welcome. If you're not um, vaccinated, you need a negative uh, PCR test within 72 hours of your departure. And uh, while coming back as of now, United States requires you to take a PCR test or an antigen test uh, 72 hours before departure, which will be facilitated by us uh, at the destination. So US still requires the testing, Greece does not require testing if you are vaccinated. This is what it stands today. Um, as in terms of how, it, how badly it is affected, uh, it isn't in a bad state compared to several other countries. And, and as you know, things are changing rapidly. So for now, as I said, 6th of November, I have more than 300 passengers just going to Greece and they are all excited. Okay, another question. Okay, good one. Yes and no. So if you guys hit that magic number of 30, 35 passengers, you have the entire bus to yourself. If not, it is again very much subject to whether you have a smallish group with you to merge with you. If you don't, let's say I have one group which is 35, but you guys are 20, I can't merge you with them. So you are by yourself, they are by themselves. But if I have two groups which are 15, 20 each, yes, we merge them. But all our groups, uh, if you remember the very first slide, all our groups are coming from chambers on the So it's, it's a very uniform kind of a mix of people. Okay, so are these the only questions? There's more, okay? Yes. So the good news is that you are staying uh, in the hotel for seven straight days. So one good part is there is no frequent checking in and checking out. So uh, you can unpack the way you want and you can pack the way you want. Uh, you can use the hotel's laundry services. Uh, some hotels do, the hotel does charge extra for that, but it's not that big amount. Um, and because you have more days staying in, in the hotel, you can plan the laundry time because if you give your laundry on the last day, you're not likely to get it. So you have to plan it. But good part is you're staying for seven straight days, so you have ample time planning. Oh, 
Okay, so economy plus or premium economy, yes and no. It depends upon whether that particular aircraft is offering it. So usually aircrafts have a, a economy and business for sure, but whether they have a premium economy or whether they have a first class is subject to the airline. So uh, you can always place your request. If it's available, we'll definitely offer it to you. I don't know. Okay. Can you hear? Have, I think, uh, can yeah, you hear? I can hear you, Terry. Yes. Um, yeah. How long is a plane fl flight from Athens to Santorini? One hour, 20 minutes. Okay. No, sorry. Uh, Athens to Santorini is 40, 40 minutes. Okay. So do you okay. sorry. go through all of the airport things when you fly from Athens to Greece as far as like you know, um, I know, I just know when we went to France, we spent half the day in the airport just waiting, you know, on, on a flight because they only had like one flight going that direction at one time. Or is this something that's going to move along as far as the airport? Okay. Time? So uh, if you notice the last day, the group is splitting into people who are going to Santorini or who are going back home. Uh, ideally, we would want people to reach the airport based on their flight times. So um, you would be dropped at the airport on a time which is closer to your flight time, not just to say that your U.S. people are going early in the morning, so you are also dropped at the airport early in the morning. That's part one. And uh, you would know your flight way beforehand because I mentioned that if you are opting for Santorini, opt it you know uh, up front so that mm -hmm. your flight is booked on the same pnr you have the same baggage limits even for the domestic connection okay so it's not something that will be slipped in later on but it is booked right up front with the schedules okay so do we have any more questions I was going to say, I, knew, I do see some people on here who have traveled with us before, um, and we're glad that you're, you're interested in this trip again. Um, we're actually going to be departing at the beginning of November for our long delayed Egypt trip. It is, was only delayed three times. So we're, we have, as a chamber, we do have a great history with Aventura, um, working with them, and we do hope that you'll join us. If you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to either myself or Connie. And as I said, the today's webinar was recorded. So I'm going to record it, edit it down. I'm going to post it to our YouTube channel. I'll send that out to everyone along with the flyer again. And if you want to share, please do. I know one of the questions that was asked was about a different airport. And we do have some people who are going from e to Egypt and they have friends who are in Virginia and then they are here, so they're both flying out of different airports and then enjoying the trip in Egypt together. So there's a lot of we're, there's a lot of options to bring other people with you onto this trip. Mm -hmm. And in some of those pictures, um, our CEO Lacey Osborne was in those as well because she did go on the trip and she had this was pre-COVID, and she had a wonderful time and she highly recommended it. Can he say one more time, because of COVID, what is required to come back to this country? Okay, so as of now, the American requirement is uh, getting an antigen test done 72 hours before departure. So what we do is uh, we facilitate that test in, in Greece for yourself, uh, and it is an added cost because the, the technician will come and take a sample and then give you the testing. It is done on day nine of the tour. So that will, that basically it's timed well in advance based on what your itinerary is. So uh, it is called as the antigen test and US still requires it. Whether it will require it in March, that is to be seen. And one other question, what happens if you test positive 
So um, if you see, I would, uh, we usually recommend people, as of now what we're recommending people is that even if you're vaccinated, even if the destination does not require any testing, still take a test before departure. So you're kind of uh, assured that you're not carrying it with you because even if you are positive, the symptoms start showing much later. We have, we have learned this at least in the one and a half year. Uh, so that is part one. Now let's say if you test positive while coming back, that's where insurance helps you because if you remember the list of items, it covers emergency medicine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Do, do you can you tell us the charge for that test in Greece in euros? Um, I, I don't have that handy right now, but it's, it's it's very much comparable to what you have here in US. Anywhere uh, in US, it is it is ranging anywhere where where from fifty dollars to two hundred dollars, depending on what speed you want. So, equivalent amount of euros. Yeah. Thank you. So any more questions? All right, I'm good. Oh, sorry, Terry, you had one? I'm good. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Vibe, for leading us through the um, what everyone can experience. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please reach out to either myself or Connie, and we'll be happy to get these answers for you. Thank you. So I'll send you the link for the insurance, and I appreciate everybody compares it and then buys it. but. No matter where you buy from it, get insurance. It's really the money well wasted. All right. Well, thank you, Vibe. We appreciate your time and thank you everyone for joining us. And we hope you all have a great evening and we hope that you'll join us for Greece. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.